those of you who got an invite, welcome to NerdProm. <laughs> no matter where in the world you are, we're all NERDS International. With the hyphen. Nerds International proudly presents... Welcome to the Dragons Are Real podcast. Hello and welcome to another show. So I've been playing quite a bit of ICRPG lately. On Thursday I played at Vigilante City with my face-to-face -face group. We're about three or four sessions in now. Then on Saturday I ran a Flash Gordon game for Shandy Andy of the Unguarded Treasure podcast, Spencer Keep Off the Borderlands podcast and Edwin. That game was uh, one of my own uh, making with my Flash Gordon conversion that I posted on the ICRPG forums a while ago. And for the game we used the Runehammer VTT. I know it's still in alpha and it's about a year away from being released, but I thought I'd give it a whirl. Um, the way it is at the moment is not how the finished product's going to be, but uh, it was nice and simple. Basically you throw up a background and move some tokens around and do some dice rolls. So I had great fun with that and thanks for those three guys for playing on that one. And then today, Sunday, I played in part three of the Scroll Thief, uh, which is a DM's Guild scenario, I believe, or DM's Adventure series, something like that. Uh, this was part three. Um, I uh, joined in with Gary and Uncle Jay from the Murder Hobo show. First time I played with those guys, and uh, this was using Tabletop Simulator. And again, this was the first time I'd used Tabletop Simulator. If you haven't seen it, it's been doing the around for a few years now. Uh, primarily designed for board games and role-playing games. Um, Gary on his show has been featuring it. Um, he's got some great videos up on YouTube. And basically it's like sitting around a table, moving the figures around. Uh, you actually roll physical dice. So yeah, I thoroughly enjoyed that. And thanks for the uh, guys for letting me uh, join in that one. So, with three ICRPG games in the space of four days, I thought, do you know what? I've already reviewed the ICRPG core rules, so it's about time I go on to some of the supplements. So today I'm going to look at Blood and Snow. So Blood and Snow uh, was a release from last year. It's an Ice Age setting and it's a, a world primer in the same way that they've done Alfheim, Ghost Mountain and Warp Shell. So it's a world primer. Um, what's different about this? It's got no magic in any form whatsoever. So it's a complete no magic setting. Also, there's no monsters. There's megafauna, which are these are the beasts of the period. So you've got your saber-toothed tigers, your bears, wolves, and mammoths. But there's no weird-ass creatures. Now, in the uh, rules, it says there's several ways you can use uh, this supplement. You can add it to your current RPG campaign. So maybe you've got a, uh, a northern region with the ice. Or you can just use it as its own setting. Or finally, you can take some of the mechanics out of it and use it in your own campaign or your own game. So what's different about Blood and Snow 2 Core IC RPG is this is a tough setting. Death is always close by and PCs are actually recommended to have three characters at the start of any game. And it says that you can expect to at least lose two. Um, what also reinforces this tough setting is there are no hearts stones at all you are limited to one heart and if you know icrpg one heart is 10 hit points so 10 hit points and that is your lot so the tundra is a is a barren land um, due to the cold and the severe weather uh, travel is infrequent and if it is undertaken it's very dangerous 
If you do travel, then um, once per day you roll a hazard, and that can be creatures that you run into or you lose some of your supplies. And also for each day of travel, you roll at least once on the weather table. And yes, you've guessed it, the weather are bad conditions, um, things like storms and snow, which are going to really make your life even tougher than it is. Now, if you do uh, bump into some of the creatures on the tundra, the good thing is that when, you've, when you kill them, or if you kill them, then you can use them to uh, carve up and you can make food out of them and use them as your supplies. So your big woolly mammoth, you spend your effort to uh, harvest it for its furs and harvest it for its meat, which is going to feed your tribe. There is no currency at all. All trade is by barter. So if you do bump into other civilizations and other tribes, then it's up to you between yourselves to trade between the two tribes and offer what you think is a fair price for what you want from the other tribe. Now one thing I do really like about this supplement, it's got lots of D12 tables. So it gives you um, tables for inspiration for your character looks, um, your, your shelter, um, your chief status and the quality of gear. So there's lots of random tables interspersed throughout. It sticks with the target numbers from Core ICRPG and target numbers are rated between 12 and 18 so that's a thaw up to ice sheets it's also got rules for travel as i said earlier and seafaring and there's rules for navigation uh, the expenditure of your supplies and the effects of the weather on you and your tribe there's also rules for hunting and foraging and you roll on your supplies uh, for supply to see how much you get whether you're doing a short hunt you're spending many hours hunting or in fact many days and you roll for randomly for supply and foraging loot that you may find there's also rules for other tribes the uh, the gods that exist the standing stones that are found dotted around the land and some relics so let's go on to character creation so character creation is slightly changed, slightly modified from the core rules. You've got 10 stat points to spend on your attributes. And those are your six attributes and your effort. Then you choose two character tags. The character tags are something that uh, have been added to uh, this supplement. And actually they, they fit in with any um, of the core ICRPG and basically tags are like special abilities. So for example, if you've got the tag of cook, this means that doubles the benefit any food items that you have created. So by um, giving tags to the characters, you can give them some special ability without writing a, writing a whole or set of rules. And um, this is something I used in my Flash Golden game. I used the tag of flight to the Hawkmen and that means that they can fly. So tags are really handy things um, that you can add to characters. It was already there in loot. Then you pick two pieces of common equipment and this uses the lists from blood and snow and supersedes the list from the core rules and then you roll or pick one starting loot. And the loot and equipment in Blood and Snow is there to, is chosen to fit the theme and it really adds to the sort of uh, flavour of the game. With regards to your tags, you, you uh, gain one new tag per milestone and another change, slight change from uh, ICRPG Core is when you roll a critical uh, fail with a uh, gear that gear is broken and is no longer usable and that's because of the tough conditions the cold and the ice affects gear so critical fail and it's busted the other change they've made is to armor armor in blood and snow soaks damage so if you've got four armor that will absorb four damage now when a player is hit they choose how they're going to distribute any damage um, given to them so they can allocate so many points to armor and so many points to their hit points but armor counts down it just doesn't absorb it it counts down so if you've got four armor and it takes two hits then the next time you hit that armor is worth two points as long as armor is above zero points then you can repair it at some later stage 
but if that armour is ever reduced to zero, the armour is destroyed and cannot be repaired. So what this also means is that uh, there's a change in the way the um, creatures attack the players. Instead of using their armour value, this time they're using the target number the same as their players. As you would expect, there are stats for the megafauna or the creatures in Blood and Snow. And what I really like is that each creature has got a D6 behaviour table below it. So it tells you what the uh, creatures that you bump into, what they're actually doing. So this is a, a nice way to change it up a bit for the GM. There's a sample adventure at the back. And this is um, the human race is facing extinction and your tribe has been uh, chosen to find the relic to save all of the humanity on the ice. And in Runehammer's normal style, he set it out with uh, little bullet points to give guidance to the GM, but then it lets you fill it in the gaps in between. And he's got some great uh, GM advice in there, how to, how to run the game, and also some more random tables for you to roll on to change it up a bit. So all in all, this is a nice little uh, PDF. It's uh, 39 pages long. It's available from Drive-Thru RPG. It's $4.50 or £3.65. And I think it's well worth the value. You can't get it in printed format. It's PDF only, but certainly it's worth the £4-ish uh, to buy. It's got some great ideas in here and I just enjoy his writing style and the way he presents um, the details. So for me, it's a big things up. If you want to play a tough game where t your characters are going to be really put into the cosh and it's going to be hard, you've got to forage, then this is a good game to try. So that's my review of Blood and Snow. And I'm going to try and get through all the other ICRPG supplements because it's just my favourite game at the moment. Big fan of it, so it's, let's get some more reviews out there. So that's all for this episode. Thanks for listening, and I'll see you all on the flip side. You've been listening to the Dragons Are Real podcast. For more information, check out our website at petejones.neocities.org, our blog at dragonsarealpodcast.tumblr.com, and we're also on YouTube. Thanks for listening. Music.